I'm going to do number two from the tear off section of the test. And this is the tear off. So number two of the tear off says to solve the following. So A would be find the solution set for two natural log of x minus natural log of x plus two equals zero. So on this one we're going to use some of those pre-calc skills of the rules of natural log and log. So from here, remember if I have a number in front, it goes to the exponent on natural log. So I can rewrite this as ln of x squared minus ln of x plus 2 equals 0. Now you should also remember the rule that when I'm subtracting, that means that I divide the insides of my natural logs. And now from here, because I'm adding, I can't multiply these two because it's inside one natural log. But because I have two natural logs, I can divide them and combine it into one. So I'm going to have natural log of x squared, the first one always goes on top, over x plus 2 equals 0. So from here, I can take the e of both sides. So I take the e of this and the e of this. So natural log and e cancel each other, so I have x squared over x plus 2, e to the power of 0 is 1. And now I have this equation to solve. I can multiply each side by x plus 2. These two would cancel, so I have x squared equals x plus 2. Now I'm going to want to subtract everything to one side. So I have x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. This I can factor. I'm going to factor it here. I have x minus 1, I mean, I'm sorry, x minus 2 and x plus 1. Because 1 minus 2 is negative 1 and so forth. So, and this equals 0. So from here I have x minus 2 equals 0, x equals 2 x plus 1 equals 0, x equals negative 1. It's important that we check our answers with natural log instead of just putting these two answers because we have a lot of restrictions. So if I plug in 2 back into this equation, everything's fine. It's in my domain and we're, we're good there. So 2 works. Okay. But then if I plug in negative 1, I have natural log of negative 1, and I can't have a natural log of a negative number, so this does not work. So your answer would just be the set of 2. And we write it like that when there's just one number. So let's just recap. We use some of the rules of natural logs, bringing exponents up, dividing when we saw subtractions. We took the E of both sides, and then we solved for here. We got two answers, but we need to make sure we check our answers. When I plug in 2 here, I got natural log of 4 minus natural log of 4 is 0. Perfect. But then when I plugged in negative, negative 1, I had natural log of negative 1, and that's not good. A lot of people might look at it here and be like, oh, it's negative 1 squared, so it's positive. But we always want to look at our original equation, so your answer is just 2. And now for part B, sorry, paper. They say let f of x equal cosine of 2x and g of x equal 3 sine x plus 2. Now on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, they want to know when f of x equals g of x. So I have cosine of 2x equals 3 sine x plus 2. Now remember I said it earlier that we want to subtract everything to one side. We don't just want to divide. So I have, when I have trig identities, sine x minus 2. Now for this cosine of 2x, we don't really know that that is very easily, but we know an identity, and that's cosine squared x minus sine squared x, 
And then I have the rest, minus 3 sine x minus 2 equals 0. Okay? So for here, we're just using identities. We're using the fact that cosine 2x equals cosine squared x squared x minus sine squared x. Okay? So cosine x, we also know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So cosine squared x can also be 1 minus sine squared x minus sine squared x minus 3 sine x minus 2 is 0. Okay, so I'm going to combine like terms. My 2 here would be minus 2 sine squared x minus 3 sine x. When I combine the last two, I have minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to multiply through by a negative because I don't like negatives. So I have 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x plus 1, 0. This I can factor. 2 sine x plus 1, sine x plus 1. When I solve these, I get sine of x equals negative 1 half and sine of x equals negative 1. We know that this happens when x is 3 pi over 2, and we know that this happens when x is, I'm sorry, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So from there, we are going to need to make a, in a line interval and test where those answers are true at. And here. Oh, I'm sorry. We can just you can leave your answers in this form. You don't need to make an interval. Okay. So for this, your answer is going to be two, and for this one, you're going to say x equals seven pi over six, eleven pi over six, and three pi over two. And you can leave your answer in that form. You don't need to write them on an interval. So this is number two of the tear-off.